was the world's first ever Halloween costume? We're going back over a hundred years, trying on multiple costumes, and cementing my place as YouTube's cringiest dad, all to bring you that very answer. Oh boy. I think this is the front. I think this is urine. Which, which hole did it come out of? Oh, it does not end well. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Style Theory, the channel that always has a trick up its sleeve to have you looking like a treat for Halloween. So, I don't know about you around Halloween time, but Halloween around the Patrick household, it is a chore because choosing a costume is really difficult. Mostly because Steph and I have opted to let Ollie, our five-year-old, choose the family Halloween costume for the last couple years, and uh, he has some very specific and difficult to fulfill tastes. Two years ago, Ollie chose the very obvious costume of Water Tower because what three-year-old doesn't want to dress as local infrastructure, right? But what did mommy and daddy get to be that year? Well, I was a nuclear exhaust silo and Stephanie was a grain silo. Can't tell you the number of questions we got that Halloween. Last year was set up to be a little bit easier. He wanted to go as Mario characters. Great! Every Mario character known to mankind has been produced and mass marketed in a spirit Halloween. Oh no friends, while mommy and daddy got to go as Mario and Luigi, Ollie wanted to go as the thwomp, the old rock creature that slams down. And so for the next couple weeks, mommy and daddy were repainting a SpongeBob SquarePants costume and adding foam spikes to the side. It turned out, but it was an engineering feat of genius. This year, Ollie originally wanted to go as Gravity Falls characters, so mommy and daddy were Dipper and Mabel, and Ollie wanted to go as, you know, what would you think? Grunkle Stan, Bill Cipher, Seuss? Oh no, he wanted to go as a haunted convenience store from episode like, for the inconveniencing. Luckily, and also unluckily, he pivoted a couple weeks ago to this. And I think you can tell based on the color palette what we're going as. Mommy and Daddy are going as Barbie and Ken, and Ollie is now going as the Barbie car. I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. Not so much for the engineering feats that have to be accomplished, but more so because this is just so, so mainstream, right? Like everyone and their grandmother this year is dressing as Barbie and Ken. You walk into a spirit Halloween and it looks like the mojo Dojo Casa House just like vomited over every single shelf. So I decided to make Ollie a little bit of a wager. I said, hey, if I could come up with a more creative, interesting, spooky costume for this Halloween, do you think we could go as that instead of Barbie and Ken? And he said, yes which means that I made a deal with the devil, and that devil is my five-year-old son. The only problem is, I don't know what to do, honestly. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what I want to be. I didn't have any better ideas. I did think it would be cool to dress as, like, the history of Halloween, or, like, what was the original Halloween costume, right? Then I realized I don't really know. And so I tasked the team, hey, can you look into the past hundred years of Halloween costumes? Go back through the history of Halloween and find me what is the original Halloween costume. What were people wearing on Halloween 1? Because, honestly, I don't know. And I ask around and people in general don't know. We all have this general vague understanding that Halloween originated as some offshoot of like All Saints Day or All Souls Day. Who knows? No one actually has a really solid understanding of this. And so, hey, Style Theory is here to answer those questions for you. That is my goal for today, friends. Take us on a high speed journey back to the past through different eras of Halloween costumes until we finally get back to the originator, the very first Halloween costume of all time. That way we can learn a little bit more about history a little bit more about this holiday that we all love so much. So, without any further ado, the team has set up a little changing area for me with all my costumes. So I'm gonna go get changed into this to begin with because I don't think anything screams modern Halloween quite like uh, the Ken core here. And then bit by bit, we're gonna work our way back to history until we find number one. I'm excited about this. I hope you're excited about this. Now, if you excuse me, I'm off to change. Let's go! So with me busy experiencing the costumes, I'm just gonna toss this episode on over to the head witch in charge, the Halloween queen of theorists, and my puppet master for today's episode, Style Theory creative director, Amy. She's the one who did all the research and set me up for my 100 years of Halloween costume journey, so she's probably the best to speak about it. When Matt said he wanted to do a Halloween episode, I felt like I had finally found my destiny. All those years of making Halloween costumes, cosplays, and spending, let's be honest, way too much money at Michael's every October, it was all leading to this. Dressing my boss in weird costumes for the edutainment of the internet. Eh. 
there are worse careers. However, since I live in LA and Matt is in North Carolina, I had to enlist the help of the NC crew to be my evil minions and help me take Matt through a highlight reel of Halloween history, starting with Ollie's pick and the quintessential 2023 guys, Ken, in what I'm going to call the mainstream media era of Halloween. You know, honestly, in any other year, this would be a perfectly fine costume. It's just right now, it, it, everyone's gonna be wearing it. I love the colors, I love the vibe, I think it's nostalgic, I think it's really cool. It's just one of those things that it's, it's too many, it's too much, it's too overdone. Overall, I gotta say, I kinda like it. I love the blonde look. You know, they say blondes have more fun while well, I'm having a great old time. Also, gotta call out this. Every one of these sorts of pre-packaged Halloween outfits always has this like one or two items where you don't know what to do with them. And in this case, it's these like armband things. It's these little like strips of fabric right here. I put them at my sock level because that's where it seemed most appropriate. I don't know if they're supposed to be like skater Ken's knee pads. I don't know if they're supposed to be like elbow pads or like other sweat pads for the arms. No clue. <sighs> Did no one consult the package? Wait, there, there was a package? I, I was just handed objects and told to put them on my body. Obviously, those are your very protective, totally not cheap knee pads. Uh, yeah, that's not where they ended up. But I can tell you, they're currently my socks being held up by gaff tape. It's not gonna be fun changing out of this and ripping that tape off my body. Yeehaw! The things we go through for this channel. Can confirm it was not fun. By the way, uh, I do also want to call out this. While we're, while we're down here, looking at my socks. We didn't end up springing for the rollerblades just because I didn't want to walk up the stairs literally in rollerblades, but instead we got these like bouncy moon shoe things. They're like one part Yeezy, one part moon shoe. I think they're kind of fun. How do you feel about your exposed hairy legs though? I am a little bit self-conscious about my hairy legs. I think if we end up doing this for Halloween, I might have to shave my legs. Or you go tights. Shaved legs for that true Ken experience. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we are getting off topic. Save all of that body hair talk for the inevitable leg shaving episode. That's going to be a doozy. Instead, I think it's time to explain why future theorist Ollie is in fact a genius for picking this costume. While Matt might not think this costume is unique enough, this is actually a perfect example of where the Halloween costume economy currently stands. It's a mass-produced pop culture trend purchased from a convenient online retailer with free two-day delivery, thus the mainstream media era of Halloween. Nowadays, the majority of most popular costumes are pretty much copy-pasted from the biggest Hollywood hits of the year. Barbie, Spider-Man, and Oppenheimer are all topping lists for 2023. Plus, Ted Lasso and Wednesday Addams are also pulling similar traction from the TV world, which is actually really lucky for me because I am Wednesday Addams every day. Put all of that costume money into my Halloween decor fund. Overall, these are a far cry from the witches and ghouls that most of us tend to associate with Halloween. And sure, you can still find those costumes, but it's hard to deny the influence pop culture has on the costume trends. In fact, it's that marriage of blockbuster IPs like Barbie with Halloween that contributed to the holiday getting so big, which actually segues very nicely into Matt's next stop on the Halloween Eras Tour, 1979, and the beginning of Halloween's horror trend. So uh, that's my cue to get changed then? Awesome. Lay it on me. Missed all of them. There were like five elements hurled at me at the same time and I missed every single one of them. It was great. Oh, I recognize this guy. There we go. So I'm gonna change into my next 1980s era costume and I'll see you on the flip side. Blood curling changes, here we go. Welcome to the late 70s, a time where Halloween was still mainly a children's holiday. A time where people still thought kids were safe to go trick-or-treating and parents certainly didn't have to worry about people causing havoc or scaring their children or creating deep-seated childhood traumas that would haunt them for the rest of their lives. Sarcasm. Or they did until 1978 when filmmaker John Carpenter changed the game forever with the release of Halloween and introduced the world to one iconic mask. And suddenly just like that, Halloween became a holiday of horror. Who knew that William Shatner had such a scary face? Fun fact, uh, by the way, uh, William Shatner, that's whose mask this is, or this is a cut out of his face. Can you hear me at all through this? This is probably the worst, right? So on one hand, I feel like I should be reacting to this costume. On the other hand, 
having this over my face when I react to this costume is kind of the worst. So it's it's the worst of all possible worlds. Plus I'm carrying this, and this is absolutely gonna get me demonetized. Monetization worries aside, thanks to old Mikey boy here, suddenly Halloween was cool again, and young adults wanted to participate, you know, as long as they could dress as serial killers. This was the kickoff to what we now think of as the slasher genre. The granddaddy of modern baddies like Ghostface, Leatherface, yeah, they have a face thing going on here, which means a lot of bloody knives and scary masks like this one. Unless, of course, you're Stephanie, who tends to see things a little bit differently. To me, it just looks like you're doing like a get ready with me video with like way too much setting powder. It's like you you set your face, you know, how the how the beauty gurus do it, but yeah. there's no contouring in yet. It's mm -hmm. just you make yourself look like a completely blank canvas, just like a really intense Nikki tutorials video. All he's missing is a little blush. You know, just a little blush in the cheeks. You've never watched one of those. There's like 17 steps of contouring between him and the most amazing face you've ever seen. Yes, Gorge. And while Matt is showing off his best Michael Myers impression, I want to talk about how the mask here is actually the most important part, not just of the costume, but in its place in our Halloween journey through time. Why? Technology. Costume makers of this time suddenly had access to new, improved machines and materials that meant you could look just like the movies, and it was cheap. These new age machines allowed costume makers to start digital printing patterns onto fabric in an easier, more vibrant way than ever before. New durable materials like latex and silicone meant that your outfit would last through your night of terrifying kids with your beautiful William Shatner face. I, I gotta say, you know, back in the olden days where paleness was a sign of beauty, Mike Myers, the most beautiful of them all. Also, when I say Mike Myers instead of Michael Myers, I think of, you know, classic comedian, aka Shrek. And so... I probably shouldn't refer to him as Mike Myers. The love guru? This is not. Oh, Matt, Matt, Matt. You do not know what I have in store for you. Mike Myers is all over this video. A little bit darker and more scary than, uh, you know, the Ken outfit that I was wearing here. I love the odd little, like, blood circles? They're Are all these... the same. They look like florets. Are they little, like, flowers? Are they supposed to be, like, gunshot wounds? Is paintballs. That, that... We're going with paintballs for yes. this one. Paintballs. Yes. Paintballs and my peanut butter and jelly knife for the purposes of monetization. Speaking of YouTube not letting us have any fun, the 70s was also the era of the sexy costume. Sexy teacher, sexy librarian, sexy mouse. You get the idea. However, after the edible underwear incident, Matt has been banned from anything sexy clothing related for a long, long time. We are all still in therapy because of that video. So instead, we decided to get Matt something a little bit more vintage. Welcome to the next era of Halloween, the 1950s and the mask on era. Ooh, what's in this mystery box? Well, pause for a second while I put it on. And while we take that pause, I'm going to take a minute to tell you about the sponsor of today's episode, Displate. Let's see if we can get this done before Matt finishes changing. I will have you know that this next costume left very little to the imagination. I had to protect my dignity. Because there was so much of that left to begin with, right? But hey, while Matt's next costume leaves little to the imagination, Displate offers almost anything your imagination can dream of. You see, if you love decorating but hate damaging your wall, Displate makes decorating your home for any season as easy as putting magnets on your fridge. Unlike traditional artwork that requires nails and other damaging materials, heck, even command strips that eventually just fall off the wall, Displate actually uses magnets to mount their high quality metal prints. So once you've hung your first print, you can easily switch it out for a new one by popping off the old one and popping on the new one. It's a one, two, pop, pop. And by the way, the metal prints are fantastic. They are vibrant and they are durable. Here at Theorist HQ, we're doing some redecorating. The former gamer zone is turning into a conference room for all gamers and non-gamers of the team to enjoy, which meant that we needed to switch out our previous plate for some new, more professional artwork. Or, if you would rather get in the spooky spirit for Halloween, this plate's website has millions of beautiful designs to choose from. I may have gotten just a little bit excited and ordered some new Halloween prints for the team in North Carolina. So expect to see some classic movie poster style prints of Dracula, Wolfman, and my personal favorite, the Queen of Monsters, Rider Frankenstein. Oh my gosh, she's exactly like you, Amy. 
She's the goth queen I aspire to be. And for Halloween, Display is giving all of you spooky style theorists a special holiday discount. Click the link at the top of the description to get one to two displays for 32% off and three plus displays for 38% off. No code needed. And if the pressure of having to choose a few designs from the millions on the Display website gives you crippling anxiety, Team Theorist actually has selected some of our favorite prints to get you started. Again, that link is at the top of the description and thanks once more to Display for sponsoring this episode. Now it's time for all of us to hold hands and find out what was in that box that I sent to Matt. Uh, they said adult costume available in four sizes for teenage and adult, uh, but apparently one of those sizes is not the size that we were able to get for me. So exciting there. <laughs> yeah, well, in my defense, this was an era when Halloween was more for kids. TLDR, not a lot of options for modern day adults. It was also the 1950s. We were coming off the war, which meant wartime rationing was still having ripple effects everywhere. In other words, plastics and textiles, you know, the stuff we use to make our modern day costumes, they were very, very limited resources. We've got such selling features as large eye holes, colorful masks, and uh, Bright for Night. It's also a uh, flame retardant, but in 1950s speak, which is mildly offensive. Uh, speaking of, I also hear that of these costumes, most of them were offensive at the time? Um, yeah. The 1950s were not what we would call a politically correct time. You had a lot of skeletons and clowns mixed in with other questionable portrayals of different races and ethnicities. Listen, it was quite the minefield navigating those eBay listings. However, we were able to locate this vintage costume from a company called Collegeville, who was one of three big costume monoliths from about the 1930s to the 1980s. Collegeville, Halco, and Ben Cooper Inc. Before the tech boom of the late 70s, these guys sold store-bought costumes to the masses and would constantly fight for franchise rights to popular IP characters because, as it turns out, franchising popular characters dates all the way back to the 30s. That being said, I take absolutely no responsibility for the state of this costume. It was in a box. I didn't get to review it before this episode. Uh, so let's see what we got here. We got this cool mask. Nice. Nothing to hold it in place. Also, if I thought the Mike Myers mouth hole was bad, this is even worse. Are you kidding? This is peak engineering of the time. This chiseled, plastic face of perfection was created by vacuum forming. Hence, me calling this the mask on era. Plastic sheets, usually made of materials like PVC or polystyrene, were attached to a mold of a character's face and heated so the plastic would become malleable. Then a vacuum would pull that heated plastic tight into the mold and boom, that beautiful costume was born. Let me do this one first, uh, which is, oh, oh boy. This has been well loved. Are you kidding me? Are, are you, <laughs> come on, man. Just, come on. Amy, Amy. Is oh, this, you look beautiful. Is this, is this the best I got? Look at how teeny, look at how teeny it is. It's also very see-through. These eBay listings only had photos of the outside of the boxes and my adult options were limited. Here, make sure you fold your collar out. You want to look like the cute little sailor boy that you are. I am the cutest little sailor boy. The most cute sailor boy. Here we go. Tie your bow, tie your one, bow. One second. <laughs> Patience. <laughs> Peanut this one, gallery? This sounds so funny. I need to put on my I need to put on my pirate pants. Yeah, this is this is a awkward stain. Honestly, what infectious diseases am I exposing myself to with this one? Literally everyone behind camera is like covering up their mouths. I think this is urine. Is it, which which hole did it come out of? I think it's the front. All right, let's go for it. Oh boy. Oh boy. Mm. Put it in the back. Turn it around. Nope. If I have to suffer through this, so do you. Honestly, I hope we didn't pay too much for this one, Amy, because this has been gently used, and by gently I mean, oh boy. It was a hundred dollars, but like I said, no responsibility. You asked for a history of Halloween, and I gave you a classic Halloween costume. Classic stains and all. <sighs> Yeah, who am I kidding, okay? This one is a bust. How was I supposed to know you can't just trust a random seller on eBay to give you a costume that doesn't have some kind of disease attached to it? Yo ho ho, ladies and gentlemen. I will gladly take Barbie over this any day. Please get me out of this. I hate all of this. Oh, wow. So there we go. I'm gonna very quickly remove my body from this walking biohazard. I'll be back.
back. Oh, I don't want it touching my body. Hey, if the ready-made pre-packaged costumes are a total failure, then it's a good thing we're moving straight past that into a time period when all you had were your own two hands. You see, before mass manufacturing, people had to make their own costumes at home, hence me calling this next era of costume history the self-made scares era of the 1930s. I even found a magazine of old-time costumes for our North Carolina crew to use as a guide for this one. My only request was for them to keep the mask theme going. I am so excited to see what they did. You know, before there were plastics and vinyls, people had other tricks for making spooky masks. Apparently we have one of them here for me to try as the next era of my Halloween tour. <laughs> Steph, very eager to hurl it at me. Get excited. Get excited. What is this? <laughs> what no, really, what is this? The next era of costuming for Halloween is depression era ghost. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was like Costco era Shrek. <laughs> See the little ears? Depression so era ghost? Yeah, yeah. He should be sad and make you remember that you're pretty poor right now. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, boy. <laughs> Did we choose green just because we were afraid that white would be used for some unfortunate snips? Yes, we totally did. But believe it or not, this was a real costume. Think of it as the great, great, great granddaddy of the Sheik Ghost. And like Matt pointed out, the original picture did happen to remind the crew of a particular green ogre. This doesn't look like a ghost. Yeah, but it feels depression-like, right? It, it does. I am very depressed from this episode, let's be honest. Is this it? I mean, it's the Depression era, so I wouldn't be surprised if they just walked around with pillowcases on their head. There wasn't really a lot of detail on the bottom half of this costume, so uh, we improvised. We did? Yeah. All right, so hit me with the improv, and we'll see this thing in its full, non-cancelable glory. Yes, they did. Cue the copyright-neutral music. Here I am, world. That's really unnerving. Hey, now, you're an all-star. Get your game on, go play. There it is. Well. Depression era Ghost Shrek. Is it, these pants legitimately fit me very nice. I, I didn't expect this from a Shrek outfit. They look really good. Can you do a turn? I can't. Check, check it out. Check it out. How's this? Good? I meant all the way around, but that's fine. Okay. I thought you wanted to check out certain of Shrek's assets. This is the most cursed image ever. I have no doubt. Do you think Ollie would like this one instead of his Barbie cow car outfit? No, I think he's gonna be petrified. Don't, <laughs> please don't show him any of these. I was gonna say, I dressed as Michael Myers earlier in this video. This is far more terrifying. This is the scariest thing we've dressed up as. This might be the scariest Halloween costume I've ever seen. Maybe we can make this a merch item. I think it would sell. I think this like would sell. Cupcakes. Let me know down in the comments below. Would you buy a Depression Era Ghost Shrek costume sold by us? Yours truly at theorywear.com. I don't know about that one, but we do have some amazing new FNAF items in the store that you should definitely check out. The Chica Cheer Set, the Monty Jacket, the Spring Trap Plush Hoodie with Purple Guy Liner, all perfect for Halloween or some casual FNAF bounding all year round. Maybe we just saved Depression Ghost for next year's collection. I'm curious, we, we gotta be close to the end at this point, right? This is like Depression era, so we're talking like 1920s, 1930s. How much further back do we need to go? We still have a way to go. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many more of these? This feels like this episode's going on forever. Oh, yeah. But from here, let's say that uh, Halloween gets a little organic. Organic? Yeah, a little crunchy. You can just kind of think of as like a Middle Plains America troll doll. Oh, Middle Plains America troll doll. I Good see. luck. Oh, thank you. While troll doll may be a bit of a stretch, we've actually arrived at what most people consider the birth of Halloween. So while Matt gets changed, we're going to go back, way back. Let's just call this one the Halloween origins era. By all accounts, Halloween is the modernized amalgamation of the traditions associated with the Celtic New Year, Samhain. It was believed to be the one night a year where the veil between the mortal and the spirit world was the thinnest, allowing the living and the dead to party like it's for hundred BC. Get it? Because the tradition was started roughly 2,500 years ago? No? I'm just old? Anyway, during these festivities, the Celts sacrificed animals to the gods, gathered around bonfires, performed protective rituals, and set food out for their hungry dead relatives to chow down on when they came to visit. But there was a chance that instead of your long-lost family member, a malevolent spirit would cross over instead. And so, people dressed up to scare those bad spirits away, and they called it guising. And as with 
many things, these traditions were incorporated into a traditional church-approved version of the holiday, All Saints Day. And instead of the traditional Samhain guises, people celebrating All Saints Day dressed up as angels, saints, and devils. However, we are not dressing Matt in ritualistic animal pelts. Instead, we decided to head on over to Ireland and Scotland for this costume. Their versions of All Saints Day and the following All Souls Day kept much more to the original Samhain traditions. So much so that the day soon became known as All Hallows Eve, which was eventually shortened to, say it with me everybody, Halloween. And while looking around to try to find some of the costumes from around this time period, I found an early Halloween era costume from the Scottish Shetland Islands called the Skeckler. Matt, come on out. I literally smell like a hay maze. You know when you go out like pumpkin picking? That is what I'm wearing on my body right now. No, I think with the pink underneath, you're actually giving like a weird beach vibe, but here, this'll, this'll fix the beach party atmosphere. Oh, thank you. My little dunce cap of Halloween. For the safety of all of us, I am wearing my, my Barbie pink under here, but normally I would be showing off the goods, if as it were, my, my Skeckler goods right now. You think we could get Ollie to wear a bunch of hay? this year? Uh, no, I don't think that. Why, <laughs> do you want a mini Skeckler to go with you? Yeah, a little bit. Skeckler mi and mini Skeckler? Yeah, Skeckler, mini Skeckler. I and could then... be mid, I could be mid Skeckler. I was gonna, no, you'll be Ms. Skeckler. <laughs> it's like Pac-Man and Ms. Pac-Man, except it's Skeckler and Ms. Skeckler. Oh, see? Style theory is helping make family memories. Now, I do want to point out that while we did our best to make a Skeckler costume, it is a little less historically accurate than I would have liked. You see, the OG costumes were actually made out of oat straw and they had ribbons and handkerchiefs as decorations and kids would carry around sheepskin bags as they went household to household to collect grain. Yeah, you think mini candy is disappointing on Halloween? Try getting grain. Just plain old grain. Meanwhile, here I am thinking Steph's excitement for bit of honeys was lame. Listen, you're just lucky I didn't have you hide your face in a hat and go door to door until someone could guess who you are. Because let me tell you, that is what they did during the original holiday. Well, let me tell you that that's of behavior is gonna get me flagged with the neighborhood watch. So I'm gonna pass. Sure, but guess what? They did have one other really fun accessory of the season. Honestly, I can't wait to see this one. This is gonna be so good. What is this? Is this a turnip? Yeah, that's totally a turnip. And it's sprouting. Oh wait, there's a face! Look at the little face! Did you not re <laughs> Hold up! Stephanie, Justin just handed you a small turnip. Yeah with a face carved into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And you did not realize that I had a face. He's just, you're like, oh, he's just giving me a turn up. I'm not part of the art department. So this is what they used to carve before jack-o'-lanterns became a thing, right? This is like the prototype of the jack-o'-lantern. They carved the, the turnip. Ja the jack-o'-turnip. Yeah, the jack-o'-turnip. Yeah. You guys did a good job <gasps> of hollowing him out and everything. Oh, that's so cute. The top pops off. I would assume that carving a turnip is significantly harder than carving like your normal pumpkin. Is that also correct? Cause, cause they're just dense. This is just dense. I, if, if I remember correctly from the last couple of days and, and overhearing the process of this turnip, I think that's why that's the face that you have is that the turnip is really difficult to carve. Oh, I thought he was just going through some stuff. <laughs> As are we all, Matt. And speaking of going through some stuff, even though we had reached Halloween's origins, we still weren't done. You see, while Halloween as we know it today did evolve from those early traditions, it took a long, long time to become an official holiday. The great American melting pot took these ancient holiday traditions of its European settlers and made its own unofficial celebration, the Halloween that we know today. Though back then you had a lot more of the tricks than treats so much so that the holiday was even getting banned for being too disruptive. At least it was until October 31st, 1920, when the town of Anoka, Minnesota came together to create the first officially sanctioned Halloween. And their costumes looked a little something like this. I love the fact that whoever made this costume took the Skeckler hat note and said, you know what, we're keeping that, but we're making it even taller. As if the cone heads couldn't get any taller. Look at this. I think you look great. Thank you. I think you. you look like a cross between David the Gnome of the early 1990s TV show and 
<laughs> what what early 1990s TV show? David the Gnome. Yep, that's a reference that everyone watching YouTube in 2023 is gonna know. Oh my god, really? Does no one read my instructions? Matt is clearly meant to be wearing a dress shirt and slacks under this. Like, I, I sent very specific reference images. Oh my gosh, no one understands my art. They did their best. It's fine. It's fine. Why do I have Mr. Tomatoes on my chest? Dude, that tomato, which is actually a moon, is giving you the side eye so hard. <laughs> This is a saucy moon. This is something on my chest that's gonna go around telling everyone I knock on the please feed me one candy. I also gotta admit, the choice of paper, not great. The number of Halloweens I have survived in rain and snow is very high. This thing would fall off in seconds. This thing is literally falling off my head right now. Well, Matt, the paper is actually the point. At the time when our first Halloween party was happening, the most popular Halloween costumes were those designed by the Denison Paper Company. Yes, a paper company company made one of the first official Halloween costumes ever. Heat your heart out, Dunder Mifflin. You see, they put out this thing called the Bogey Book, which had party and costume ideas and instructions, like ones for the mega popular slipover that Matt is wearing. Not only did this give people cheap and easy ways to make things at home, it sold a lot of paper for Denison. Hence, why this era of Halloween costume is one I'll call the paper please era. So basically, this is like proto-Valentine's Day. Yeah, designed to sell a walking billboard, basically. Wow, gonna get demonetized here. I'm gonna give you the, the full 360 look. Here it is. Oh, I like the back, it's nice and gray. I like how we embellished that one. I, I do appreciate the trick or treat bag. I feel like I should be compensated for the size of my hat. The amount of candy I get should escalate proportionally to the to the length of my hat. Wait, I'm gonna do a quick search of what 1920s candy. What are you actually receiving in exchange for this type of effort? Yeah, here I am. Here's my costume. What am I getting from the door, ladies and gentlemen? You're looking at plain and jumbo peanuts. Ooh, peanuts, buddy. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for for Halloween. Grandma's hard candies. I, I can vibe with the Werther's original. Chocolate covered nuts and grandma's bridge mix. There's a lot of nuts involved with this costume. I had way too many nuts for Halloween. Please stop sending me your nuts this Halloween. Peanuts, chocolate covered nuts, regardless. Keep your nuts away from my bag. Uh, 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 uh. Keep that kind of talk for Santi and all of your weird food theories that you do over there. What I want to know is, do we have a winner? There you have it, theorists. The first ever officially sanctioned Halloween costume mostly. So now I just need to go and show this to Ollie and convince him that this rejected arts and crafts project is better than dressing like a Barbie car. You know, ironically enough, I just realized that I'd be trying to convince Ollie to choose a paper doll outfit as opposed to the world's most popular doll outfit. I'm gonna put my money on the Skecklers instead. Anyway, I'm gonna go get some bit of honey. Remember, that's just a theory of style theory. Happy Halloween! Woohoo! Little addendum here at the end. I did in fact show it to Ollie. He said, and I quote, Daddy, you're silly. And he walked off to play some Sonic the Hedgehog. Looks like I'm going as Ken. Unless, of course, he decides to change his mind again last minute. I guess I'll see you on Spooky Day. Roll the end card. <laughs> I love it. Sassy moon. I'm dressing as a sassy moon this Halloween. That's how I feel about this episode. Sassy Halloween! I'm going back in my Shrek pants. Those were comfy. Just want to wear my Shrek. Leave a man! to wear his Shrek pants in peace, okay? Shrek is love, Shrek is life, Shrek is a fantastic pair of pants.